The Lord be with you. Is it on? I don't know. Oh, it just needs to be turned up. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome. And to those of you joining us online through Facebook, uh, welcome to you as well. And um, also uh, with YouTube. Good morning and welcome. Today is Sunday, January 15th. It is a big day. Um, and we are so glad that you are here in our midst. We hope that you feel comfortable and welcomed today. Lots of things going on. First, I want to welcome um, Tom and Dee's family here today. She's, uh, Leanne's been a member for a long time too, right, since childhood as well. And she's having her baby baptized. Well, he's about almost two, right? Okay. And so we have Derek and Leanne Longnecker with us. And the godparents, if you want to look, you can look at the back of the bulletin. Their names are in here too, their siblings. And um, <clears throat> I told Leanne that the siblings, if you're godparents, you have to pay for college. So I hope you're starting to save up now. <laughs> but you can always get back because if you have children, you can tell them godparents. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not part of the godparent plan. But we want to welcome the whole family here today. We're so grateful that you're in our midst. I have several other announcements that I want to share with you. Um, this coming Saturday, there is a funeral in this place for Julie uh, Snyder, who died, I think, was it like in October? So the family is now having the service here. It's at 11 o'clock. All are welcome to attend. If you've got time on Saturday, we'd love to see you come out and be here with the family. Today, in addition to the baptism, we have the council installation. And I'm going to plop that at the end and make us get right through that, because you know I'm going to be heading my way out the door to um, Big Spring United. And they have their annual meeting today, so I've got my full. <laughs> it's a busy, busy time. We have our annual meeting in two weeks, I think, right? The last Sunday of the month. So please do prepare to stay for a few minutes after church on that Sunday for that meeting. The council will be preparing for that meeting and our meeting for council is on Thursday night this week. So if you're in the council, please do plan to be here with us. All right, so there have been several prayer requests that have been sent my way. We have lots of people in the hospital this week. This includes Sunny Urban um, and Holly Kutz. Holly tripped and she was supposed to be in Florida. But she tripped and fell and shattered her shoulder. So we just, <laughs> on Friday, I think it was, I went in to see her and prayed with her in the hospital just before the surgery. And, uh, and her hubby, D Dave, tells me that she's recovering well from that. So we're going to continue to keep uh, them in our prayers. Gil's been in the hospital. Gil Parthamore, how long did you say he's been in the hospital now? Since December 19th. Since December 19th. Isn't that amazing? So... If you have time and you want to go out to Hershey, you can visit them too. I'm sure they would love a visit out there. Um, all right, and Anita and Joanne, guess who was back in and out of the hospital again? Both of them as well. So we're going to keep the painters in our prayers. Um, and then um, I was just informed about some very serious um, accident. I don't know if any of you were in Mechanicsburg when this accident took place, but one of my colleagues, she's a, a deacon, and we just had her ordination this past um, autumn. Her name is Leanne Elliott, and she's been serving at Trindle Springs, and she was in the fatal accident on Friday. So the bishop is with Trindle Springs, and Pastor Aaron had to come driving back from his trip with his family in New York this weekend. So we're going to keep Trindle Springs in our prayers, along with all the young people, because she was the youth worker there. We just had the Synod's Winterfest. I don't know if any of you young people, any of you, have ever been to one of the Winterfests. Um, but it's a wonderful youth event, and this beautiful young uh, lady died. So we'll keep Leanne Elliott and Trindle Springs in our prayers. Christy and Joe, we know that you lost somebody 14 years, your little puppy dog that you've loved for a long time. So we're going to keep you in our prayers as we remember Ruger. Um, 
I personally have lost pets and it's like a child. It's impossible to let go of that pain, so I know the grief is profound and you're in our prayers. We're going to keep Martha in our prayers. And then, do you remember Pastor Jody Rice? Uh, she and Jeff are both having medical issues, so I was asked to keep the Rices in our prayers too. So quite a few people in our prayers, and then I was given a list of folks that are fighting cancer, and these are their names, Janice, Gladys, and Sonia. So we're going to keep your girlfriends in our prayers. Are there any other folks that we need to remember today in prayer? All right. Like I said, there's a lot going on, so forgive me if I screw up anything along the way. I'm trying to keep it all in this head of mine. <laughs> but I'm very happy that you're here for worship. If you're joining us online, please do say hello. Let us know that you're here so we can greet you and offer our uh, hello right on back. All right. It's time, isn't it? How about we stand up together and call upon the name of God while we make the sign of the cross upon our bodies. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, we'll take a moment to uh, confess our sin to God. If you would like to sit or kneel or uh, continue standing, it's up to you how you feel most comfortable as you speak to God what's on your heart. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. You are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. As you're able, please stand with me as we sing, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his clear voice sounding, saying, Christian, Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our redeemer, by your spirit hold us forever. 
that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. Listen to me, O coastlands. This is a reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength from nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord.
second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day. John, again, was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which, trans which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, you know how this goes. Knock, knock. Banana. Knock, knock. Banana. Knock, knock. Orange. Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? Um, all right, here's another one. Knock, knock. Cows go. No, silly. Cows go moo. Cows go moo, not who. Really, Jim? I mean, are we not? Oh, you couldn't hear me? Oh, okay. I thought maybe you weren't a farmer like me. Okay. This past week, I was at the farm show. 
And um, I got to do the um, invocation for the kids that won their scholarships. I've been doing this for a few years, and I love doing it. And I always start out with some dumb jokes. Uh, so I thought I would share that with you as I was walking around the farm show. Have any of you been to any of the farm shows? What do you notice when you're there? Oh, the smell. <laughs> yeah, I guess I got used to that going out to Big Springs where it smells like that every week. No, for me, it was more about the humanity. Like, there's so many people. Like, there's no room anywhere, right? Do you notice that? Have you been in that space? I thought to myself, is everybody in Pennsylvania here? Um, the world is busy like this. It just is. The more we live out here, the more buildings that are going out, the more people that are on the road and you're getting ticked off by. Like, it's for real. It's living and breathing, moving forward, even when somebody dies and we want to get off the world because we want the world to stop, right? Isaiah knows that this is how we feel. And in fact, if you read that or heard that this morning, the person that is chosen by God to be God's servant is like, look, this world is too much, I can't handle it, and I'm done. Like, you gave me enough, I was sent for a mission, nobody's listening. It's all going in one ear and out the other anyway, so why you make me do this? And God then offers some, you know, words of hope, saying, look, I knew you before you were born. I knew you in your mother's womb. So I'm going to ask you, I know this is a big ask, close your eyes for a minute. Please don't fall asleep. Okay. But I'm going to ask you to take a nice deep breath and then relax your shoulders. And your belly. And all the things that feel raised up inside of you. Take another deep breath. And let it out. All of us can get bent out of shape when it comes to living in this unforgiving world. You can open your eyes. It forces us to move forward even when we're not ready. When you're wound up and intense, it's impossible to hear, it's impossible to see, and to know what is true. What is true is that you are loved, wanted, and needed. Does it always feel that way? No, most of the time the world makes you feel like, get out of my way. But you are loved, wanted, and needed. Our lesson, our second lesson from 1 Corinthians is telling us that we have everything that we need. We, collectively, have everything that we need. Paul is writing to a divided community. And in Corinth, the church was splintering into little factions. If you take a look at our national church, is that not what's happening? Yeah. Not just our Lutheran church, but all of the churches are splintering into factions, and everybody thinks they're the right side. We need to realize that God is with all of us and not co-opted by any group that thinks they're right. God's with all of us. I'm sorry when you're praying for your favorite football team, he's with the other side, other side too, right? That's just it. If you're a Republican, he's with the Democrats. If you're a Democrat, he's with the Republicans. If you're in the middle, he's with you too. What Paul says to everyone is that we actually need everyone because we all have gifts to bring. This is what he writes. I, thank, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, Paul, big language. It basically is that we need each other because we all have gifts, including little Aiden, to the table, right? Like the energy is what we all wish we had, right? That ability to see everything new. Nope, I've seen that, done that. And yet Aiden is exploring the world in a whole new way. We need every single one of us. This weekend also happens to be Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, Day weekend. Elizabeth has off from school tomorrow, and I thought it's really interesting how he was also a theologian, not just a civil rights leader. While he was in jail in Birmingham, Alabama, he wrote a letter, and in it he wrote, in a real sense, all life is interrelated. 
all men, and I would include, today he would have put women too, all people are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects dire one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. And we know this to be true. Jesus came to teach this very message from God. We are connected, all of us in creation. There may be swarms of people out there, but each one carries gifts into this world. And we all need one another. If we wind each other up, and believe me, we know the buttons to push on one another, don't we? If we wind each other one up, that helps nobody. Instead, we need to see one another. Let me talk to you a minute about seeing. The Gospel of John, the one we jumped into this week, this morning, shares the story of the day after Jesus is baptized. John the Baptist is once again proclaiming that he sees Jesus. Look, look, <laughs> here is the Lamb of God. John, we know, is the modern-day prophet in Jesus' time who is sent to point, out to point out the Messiah, the Son of God, and he does that. What's interesting is what comes next in this story. And that is Jesus' encounter with John's disciples, who become disciples of Jesus. How the story goes, Jesus turned and saw them following him. And he asks the question that we are all asked, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Notice the language here. And instead of answering in a sentence, the guys that are following him are saying to him, uh, where are you staying, Jesus? Where are you staying? In, in John's gospel, staying is also abiding or being with. So where are you abiding, Jesus? Where are you dwelling? And do you remember what Jesus' response was to them? Come and see. So, and seeing in this gospel is to trust, to believe in. And Jesus talks to us about abiding and seeing. Why would you want to abide with Jesus? Well, because that's where the Spirit of God dwells, and where the Spirit of God dwells, and where the Spirit of God dwells among us, is the peace which passes all understanding. Is that what you're looking for? What are you looking for? Peace which passes all understanding. I think we're all longing for that in the middle of our grief and the trauma and drama of this world. This morning we are invited with those disciples to see, to trust Jesus, to know that we are inter interconnected to one another through the waters of baptism. Aidan's baptism is not just about Adam. It is about all of us. God saw Aidan and sees his little sister even now as she is coming into the world. And God sees you. God knows each of us by name and invites us to follow in the love that God has for this world, for this cosmos, the whole of creation. God continues to invite us to see that the watery grave is a passageway to eternal life because what is old is drowned and we are reborn new and given a new name just as he sees Simon on that day and decides to give him a new name, Cephas, which is translated into Peter, the biggest numbskull of them all. Like, seriously, we know Peter, right? Jesus who? Never heard of him, right? Okay. God knows each one of us, even in our density, says, guess what? You're my child now. I adopt you, 
even when you screw up. And especially because you do. Because I love you. And I want to give you what I have. The peace which passes all understanding. There is hope, even in the sea of humanity that we walk in, that we are all connected to one another. We all carry gifts for one another. So when you see that, I can't use bad words in church, but we see that guy, that driver or whatever else that drives you nuts, that person. When you see them, the kindness can draw up from you because you have God's peace already in you. And you can see that and wish that into them as well. You can present that peace into the world. Believe me, maybe it'll change their whole life too, right? In that moment where you're like, go ahead. You so hurried, go ahead. God names and loves all of us in this world, in this life. And that's why we celebrate and bring children to baptismal water, and adults too. We bring people to the water because in that water there are promises made to us by God. You're my kid. I love you. You have gifts, and I'm going to name them now. They're beautiful gifts. And I love you, and I want you to be part of this world. Let us pray. Yes, God, we know that the farm show smells and so does the farmlands and us too. Sometimes we stink. But you love that smell. <laughs> you said, I put that smell into the world to remind you that we need the earth. We need one another. Thank you for places where we can come into the sea of humanity and for times and places like this where we can step back, take a deep breath, close our eyes, and refresh to have some water, to have some body and blood and wine and bread and refresh, to remember why we are in this world, to bring your peace, which surpasses all understanding, into the world. For when we are reminded, reminded and reminded that we're all children of God, we begin to see the world differently and recognize that you are in all of it and that you love what you have made, that you love each one of us, and that when we die, we are carried to you to be at peace, the kind of peace that does surpass even our now understanding. We pray for Julie's family and all those like Leanne's family who are grieving today. We pray for those who've lost their pets we pray for everyone, Lord, who needs to know your peace. But especially we give you thanks, Lord, today for Aiden, whose vibrance and joy reminds us of the hope in this world, of the next generation seeing everything for the first time. Help us to see the world through his eyes. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So we're going to... Um, we're going to sing the hymn of the day, and I know you people like to stand while you sing, um, and, and you're welcome to do so, but if you prefer to sit, we're going to sit right after we sing. So your choice, stand or sit, whatever you like to do while singing. We're going to sing, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, and during that song, the family will join me at the front. You can wait to like the third verse and come on up and join us up here for the baptism.
please be seated. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have aid and baptized into Christ? If so, then say, I do. As you bring Aiden to receive the gift of baptism, you are actually entrusted with responsibility. They're in writing, so now you know. It doesn't say anything about college. But these are the things that you are asked to do. To live with Aiden among God's faithful people. To bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. To teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments to place in his hands the holy scriptures and to nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through his words and deeds, to care for others and the world that God made, and to work for justice and peace. All right, all of you. Do you promise to help aid and grow in this Christian faith and life? If so, then say, I do. I do. All right, we're counting on it. <laughs> All right. People of God, do you promise to support Aiden and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, then say, we do. I ask all of us to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All right, so now it's time to take that picture and pour it slowly in here as I read. And um, if the two boys want, I'm going to have a moment where they can practice blowing on the candle, right? Blowing on the water, not the candle this time, though. All right, you ready? We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. Hey, Aiden, look at what he's doing. Can you see what he's doing? Look at this. You want to touch it? Do you boys want to touch? Go ahead, put your hands in there. By your word you created this world. You called forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. All right, can you blow across the water now with me, boys? Can you blow? You do that. You know how to do that, like on a candle, yeah? Can you do it? <laughs> you could practice on that. Yeah. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Amen. All right, Aiden, it's time for baptism. Are you ready? Is it all right if I step in here so people can see? Awesome. All right, can you hold Aiden's head over the water so we don't get it all over? And I have a napkin over there for a towel. You want to do it. Thanks for the help, Aiden. All right, you ready? Aiden, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. He's like, no way, Jose. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here you go, Mama. You did it. Good job. Did you like that water? Yeah. <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Aiden with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. All right, I got one more thing that I'm going to be using here. It's a little bit of oil. Aiden, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the Christ, cross of Christ forever. Amen. All right, now it's time for that candle. Your uncle's going to bring it over so you can see it. Do you like candles? Yeah? He's like, yeah. Yeah, he's like, I want it. Let your light so shine before others, Aiden, that they may see your good works and glorify your God, your Father in heaven. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Aiden, you want to blow that out? Go ahead. You got it. A little harder. There we go. A little help. Listen, Aiden, now you get birthday presents and baptismal day presents, so uh, you know to keep those godparents on the, on the reminder list of that. Yeah, you see the candles are the same, yeah. And you can light that on this anniversary every year like you light one on your birthday. God bless you, Aiden. Let us welcome him with a round of applause. Woohoo, Aiden! <laughs> You may return to your seats, and I'm going to invite everyone else. We've got some gifts for you, too, on the table from the congregation, and uh, including a little um, certificate for his baptism, which I need to sign yet. But here are the Bibles and little Bible stories that you can share with Aiden Thank as he grows. You. I'll um, sign this and give it to you. Sounds good. All righty. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> Let us stand together as we continue our worship with the prayers. Are there any prayers from online? Okay. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for this church, for the world and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries, including our synodical mission starts and the missionaries that we support through our congregation and our synod. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend on them, and bring rain in, into places of drought. We ask you to not only protect those places of water, but those places that are suffering on the West Coast by so much rain, Lord. We ask that you be with our nation and all places that are struggling. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. <laughs> Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. This morning we pray especially for Peggy Warmcastle, Anita and Joanne Painter, Hannah, Greg Mitchell, Dale and Karen Kaler, Woody Isher, Trudy Stumm, Loie Parker, Steve Knock, Judy Hunt, Etzel, Debbie Aldridge, Tim Holden and his family, Kathy Miller, Judy Hawley, Marty Pano, Jenny's mom and her sister, Marty and Paul Scheffler, Ken, Judy Smith and her family, Bob and Maggie Fogelman, Dave Kutz and now his wife Holly too, and for Marie and Sonny and Bonnie and Gil Parthamore. We also pray for Julie Snyder's family and Christy and Joe uh, on the loss of Ruger. We pray for Martha Muller, for the Rices, Jody and Jeff. And we pray for Leanne uh, Ellis and Trindle Springs, Leanne Elliott, excuse me. And for those we name in our hearts now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. We also pray for our council as they're installed this day. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it feels like a sharp sword or a polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In every time and place, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who've died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. If you're joining us online, please do say peace be with you so we know that you're here. And we'll send that piece right on back to you. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. I missed Janice and Gladys and Sonia in the prayers, but they will be prayed for. Okay. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. body of Christ.
blood of Christ shed for you. and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Before we do the blessing, I'm going to invite the leaders of the congregation, the council members, to step forward for their installation. D, you just get double duty today, don't you? It's a big, beautiful day. You, you can be seated. I know I'm making you stand a lot here. <laughs> How about Lutheran calisthenics to keep your body moving? Okay. These folks that are standing up here have been elected St. Paul Lutheran Church uh, to position of leadership at St. Paul Lutheran Church. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, you are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. And this is sort of like a reverberation of our lessons today. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You, my friends, have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. That's a big job. That's a lot. It's just like paying for college. <laughs> you are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out these duties of the offices to which you've been elected? If so, then say, I will, and I ask God for help. I ask him. All right. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders? Will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, then we say, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will. I now declare you installed as officers and council members of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you, and direct your ways and your days, your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Family, will you please stand me, with me for your blessing? Oh, you have something to yes. announce? I'd like to thank Joe Hoover for the last six years. He oh, yeah. Council. He did a great job. You'll be missed. Thanks, Joe.
Thank you for remembering that. You get one year off, Joe. <laughs> and then how it looks sometimes. Okay. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Let us sing, may the God of hope go with us. Thank you for coming.